Hey everybody, welcome back to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're looking at some of the great questions we got on our most recent video about guard traces and crosstalk, and we're gonna break down what happens when you have microstrips and strip lines. Now, on that previous video, which you can find in the description, we looked at a simple situation where we had a trace grounded at both ends used as a guard trace between two strip lines. Now, we did some simulation results, and after showing that video, we got some really great feedback from the community, we got some great questions, and we even had an expert jump on the YouTube comments section to give us his insights. So, we're gonna look at all of that break down the difference between microstrips and strip lines and really see where our results were consistent. Let's go ahead and get started. In our most recent video where we looked at the use of guard traces to try and reduce crosstalk, we found two really important results. The first was that if we want to even try and reduce crosstalk with a guard trace, we already have to space out the traces far enough such that we're probably gonna have sufficiently low crosstalk that's gonna be suitable for just about any digital interface. If you wanna use a guard trace, you're gonna have to space those traces out far enough anyway by at least the 3W rule. The next important result that we found was that in a simulation, we appeared to see a pretty substantial reduction in crosstalk. So we wanna validate that against what some other folks in the community had to say and against an important result from uh, Eric Bogatin and Bert Simonovich. So first, let's look at some of the questions and some of the comments we got on that earlier video because I think they're pretty interesting and we're gonna to respond to some of those in this video. Here's our first comment. This clearly contradicts Bogatin's results. In the frequency domain, there is no resonance. Either tooling is different or Bogatin's point is wrong. So the issue here is because Bogatin and I are not exactly looking at the same situation. He was looking at a microstrip, I was looking at strip lines. We're gonna resolve that contradiction or apparent contradiction here in this video. Our next question comes from Chromatech. Chromatech writes, Eric's simulation shows an increase in crosstalk, but Symbior shows a decrease in crosstalk. Neither uses stitching vias. So which one is correct? Well, they're both correct in different situations. So again, microstrip versus strip line, and then are you stitching a bunch of vias along that guard trace? Godzich, whose question started this entire series, writes, Thanks for reacting to my feedback. Much appreciated. I fully agree it generates extra and unnecessary labor when you add guard traces manually. Additionally, placing high-speed traces at 3W or even 4W, 8W distances gives you excellent results when it comes to crosstalk. And he's exactly right. It does give you excellent results when it comes to crosstalk, especially if you're riding over a ground plane. Now we come to a well-known expert in the industry, as well as one of our podcast guests, Bert Simonovich. He writes, personally, I do not use guard traces. In our 2013 Design Con paper, Eric Bogatin and I did an exhaustive study on guard traces. And that's one of the things we're gonna look at in this video because his results are very interesting and they reveal some different situations relating to the use of guard traces that you might try, but you might find mixed results. So obviously we have a bunch of different results here that seem to be in contradiction with each other. And part of the reason for that is because we're looking at the difference between microstrips and strip lines. Now in Eric Bogatin's Altium Live presentation, he showed results for strip lines. In my results in the previous video, they were all results generated with strip lines. Why does this matter? And how does the difference between leaving something floating and leaving something shorted matter? Well, let's take a little deeper look. So in our situation where we have our two coupled traces, we have our first trace like this, we have our guard trace here, and then we have our second trace possibly coming in something like this. Now, these traces that we have here on the top and on the bottom are signal traces. And these, in our example, were designed to 50 ohms, both of them. And because we're dealing in S-parameter simulations, we have to assume that all of these ports are also terminated to some impedance. So in this case, we also have our ports terminated to some reference impedance of 50 ohms. So that's here on these two ports on the bottom trace, as well as this port and this port on the top trace. What about this guard trace? How is it being terminated? Well, in the example that we looked at, and I think in the typical method that someone will use, they will have the guard trace terminated at least at one point here to ground, and then here at the other end also to ground. Now, this is one case that Eric Bogatin looked at. In our case, we essentially did the same thing. The difference that between our two different simulations was that I'm doing strip line, he was doing microstrip. Eric also did 
a case here where we essentially have a thick guard trace, which is just copper pour, also with a row of stitching vias. And then you saw that clip in the previous video. But we could also do this without any of these vias, and we could do this as an open. So this would just be floating copper. So this could be open, and this could be open. And essentially, if this is just open, it has no connection back to any of the surrounding grounds, so it's essentially just floating copper. There's a third case where you could have this terminated to the same impedance as your traces. So in this case, we would also have ZREF equals 50 ohms for this guard trace. And then same thing here at this other end. We could have ZREF equals 50 ohms at the other end for this guard trace. All three of these different situations are going to have an important effect on the crosstalk received by the victim trace. And then on top of that, we also have differences in microstrip and strip line. So what we looked at, as I said before, was the case where we had this configuration with ground and ground in strip line. Now, Eric Bogatin also did this simulation in his Altium Live presentation, but instead of doing strip line, he was essentially doing micro strip. And he was doing this with copper pour, which is essentially equivalent to a much wider guard trace. So let's take a look at Eric Bogatin's results for this specific situation with a micro trace grounded at both ends. And now you can say, well, of course, I'm gonna not leave floating copper anywhere. I'm gonna, I'm gonna add at least a single via. Maybe I'll add two vias on the ends. Everybody says, yeah, add at least two vias on the ends. Let's see what happens when we add just two vias on the ends. Because after all, instead of having opens, we're gonna have shorts. And so because we have shorts, what are we gonna do? We're gonna have, still have a resonant cavity. We're still gonna have the energy bouncing back and forth. And so here is what happens when we add just two vias on the ends of that copper uh, pore region. It's not floating, but it still has low impedance on the ends, high impedance in the middle. We've built a resonant cavity. Now, if you haven't seen that entire Altium Live presentation, make sure to take a look in the description. We have a link to that Altium Live presentation with Eric Bogatin. Now, his result in that presentation is important, but it's also part of a larger subset of results that include the different types of terminations that I mentioned, as well as the differences between microstrip and strip line. As the comment from Bert Simbonovich that I showed earlier mentions, he and Eric Bogatin actually did a pretty exhaustive study on the differences in crosstalk between these different configurations where you have open, closed, and reference impedance terminated guard traces. So if you're not sure who Bert Simonovich is, we've actually had him on the On Track podcast. Let's take a quick look at this clip so you can learn more about Bert Simonovich. You are well known in uh, the signal integrity community uh, as someone who has uh, very eloquently explained stubs and someone who's very eloquently dealt with uh, roughness on interconnects and then also on the plane, which I think people don't, don't often think about. Generally, people say, well, that's not high speed, it's just power. So they may use uh, a rougher copper or a reverse treated foil. And reverse treated foil means the, the mat side now is the side that gets bonded to the prepray. Now on our previous guard trace and crosstalk video, Bert Simonovich actually posted a link to his design con paper that he did with Eric Bogatin, and it has been republished on Signal Integrity Journal. So now let's take a look at some of those results in that paper and see whether or not they're really consistent with the results shown by Eric Bogatin in his Altium Live presentation, as well as what we saw from the Symbior results in our previous video. Now here's the article that has been reposted onto Signal Integrity Journal with Eric Bogatin and Bert Simonovich. They have looked at crosstalk on these different termination configurations that I mentioned earlier. They also looked at next or near end crosstalk and fext or far end crosstalk. So let's take a look at this first set of core results. So what they did in this simulation is they looked at the simulated noise on the victim line for each of these three termination conditions. And this is for a terminated microstrip guard trace between two microstrip traces. Now here in the red curve, you can see that this data is for no guard trace with 50 ohms termination applied to the guard trace. 
The blue curve illustrates that at first, it appears that we get some benefit in terms of crosstalk reduction, but then we get a little bit of a bump. You can see that here in the other termination configurations as well. So when the guard trace is open terminated, we don't really get any initial reduction in crosstalk, and then we get the back and forth reflection that Eric Bogatin was talking about. When it's short terminated, where we have the vias at both ends of the guard trace, we get an apparent initial reduction in crosstalk to some extent, and then we get this bouncing around that he referenced in his Altium Live presentation. Now with the far end crosstalk, we see mixed results all the way around. Here we don't really seem to see any apparent benefit in crosstalk with 50 ohms termination, which by the way is not really something you're going to do in practice. With open termination or floating copper, we see a degradation in crosstalk, so we actually get more crosstalk and that's what we don't want. Here with short terminated, again, we get an initial reduction, but then we get this bouncing behavior that shows that the crosstalk pulse repeats uh, and then eventually decays. So their conclusion here in the microstrip there is no advantage in using a guard trace, and I would agree. Next, let's look at strip lines. This is the case that corresponds with what we simulated in Symbior, and specifically the short terminated case, because if you look back at that example project, you'll note that I actually had that trace shorted to ground at both ends. So here with short terminated, you already have really low crosstalk, right? This is three millivolts with one volt injection pulse, but you see that it's already really low, and then it drops even lower once you have this guard trace applied and then shorted at both ends. In the far end crosstalk waveform, you see that it's already very low, and then it looks like it gets even lower, but the far end crosstalk is already so low as to be negligible. Same thing happens in the far end crosstalk with the open terminated trace. But here with the open terminated trace, where the trace is left floating, we also have an increase in the crosstalk, and that's in the near end crosstalk. So again, red curve is with no guard trace, blue curve is with the guard trace applied, we get an increase in the crosstalk. Now, when we have the 50 ohms terminated guard trace, which as I said, is not really a practical situation. I don't know anyone that's gonna terminate a guard trace to 50 ohms or copper pore to 50 ohms. You can see very clearly that with the guard trace, you get a slight reduction in the near end crosstalk, but in the far end crosstalk, you get an increase. So in the strip line, there's only a dramatic reduction in near end crosstalk and no additional penalty to far end crosstalk as long as the guard trace is shorted at its end to the return paths. So if you were going to use it, that's the recommended condition. However, as you can see here in the upper right graph, the near end crosstalk is already very low. And again, you're already gonna have to space those lines out far enough apart to where you can even fit a guard trace in between them. I think this illustrates only one situation out of 12 where you get a benefit to crosstalk by using a guard trace. This means in general, you should probably just avoid the use of guard traces and then just stick to spacing your traces far enough apart. And then if you really still have a problem with crosstalk, bring that ground plane a little bit closer to your traces to reduce crosstalk further. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. I'm gonna put a link to that Signal Integrity Journal article in the description. Make sure to go give it a read and learn more about these different situations involving guard traces. And I think we can all arrive to the same conclusion. They're probably more trouble than they're worth and you should just avoid using them. Thanks again for watching everybody. Make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Leave your comments and questions in the comments section because we always love getting your comments. And finally, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.